All right, check this out. This robot right here is literally opening the door of that 3D printer. Put this camera here so you can see it a little bit better. All right, today we are going over 3D printer automation with the 401 bot. Now, first things first, the 3D printer automation will be just one of many programs that you can download and run on your 401 bot. Like I said before, the purpose is to have a large online library, just like Thingiverse or Printables, but for robot programs instead of .stl files. So. For example, today we're working with the FDM printers behind me here, but in the future, you could just go online and download a program to work with say resin 3D printers and you could automate them that way. With that being said, let's jump into it. So let's say that we are printing a basic object, something like this here, the classic Benchy. Well, for a basic print like this, it doesn't really make sense to go in and grab the whole print bed. Instead, I would probably just actually have the robot arm go in and grab the Benchy itself. Once it grabs it, we could do anything like put it in in a bin, you could fill a huge bin with these, you could just run it over and over, or if you want to get really, really fancy, you could actually have it do something like put this in a box, tape up the box, and then even put a shipping label on it and out it goes. But let's not get too, too far ahead of ourselves. We'll get into some programs like that later. Now, when it comes to programming the actual 401 bot and creating this automation, honestly, it's a pretty easy program to make. The hardest part by far is going to be opening the door because it has these little tiny door handles and also we're gonna have to have the robot open it in a perfect circular motion. Now, we could also just 3D print some door handles. It would be easier for the robot to grab, but for the purpose of this video, let's try and show off the 401 bot a little bit. So we'll leave everything stock as is. And what we're gonna do is we are going to create a program for the 401 bot to come over, open the door, and then actually grab one of these benchies out of there. So let's get started with that. All right, so here I'm gonna show you the 3D software. Now remember, the goal is to open the door of the 3D printer. Now here is the 401 bot, and you can see it over there. And as I sort of change positions of the 401 bot in 3D space here, you can see it will uh, change positions behind me there, which is really cool. Now in this workspace as well, you can see I have the three 3D printers and I actually even have a little conveyor belt in here as well, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. So when it comes to opening the door, I'm gonna show you the program that I wrote for it to open the door. I'm just gonna turn off the synchronization between the robot and this one, because I wanna show you mostly what it looks like on the screen right here. So I'm gonna call the open door program and let's just watch what happens. All right, so that's cool. Now we can see that the door is open. We have the red cube over there representing the object. And let's say that we wanted the robot to actually go and pick up that cube and then place it somewhere. You can see here, I have the robot going. It's gonna grab the cube and it's actually gonna bring it down and put it on the conveyor belt. Now for the demo program or the demo video that we did with the 401 bot, I had to do that. For the video today, I think we're just going to grab the Benchy and place it in a box or something like that. You can see here, it is really cool. We can set up these full uh, sort of scenes with the robot in 3D. We can render them, we can animate them, and then we can have the actual robot do exactly what we're creating on the computer. So that there is the 3D software. Now, of course, we also have our own 401 bot software that's much, much easier to use than this one. This is more of like an intermediate to professional version, whereas we also will have the sort of beginner friendly. It's more of like a video game control almost with like up, down arrows, left, right. You can control the gripper separately, all kinds of easy stuff like that. And of course you can still make programs. In fact, the program that we are making today, the first time that we ever ran this, we built it in sort of that much easier to use software. So whether you are beginner or advanced, it will suit your needs. So let's keep going. Okay, so at this point, the door is open. And now all we have to do is be careful not to close it when the robot is going back. So I'm also gonna place this box 
right here and we are going to get the robot to actually reach in, grab the Benchy, bring it out and put it in the box. Now, like I said, the door opening is actually the much harder part to program. Now we're pretty much just playing with joysticks, getting that robot arm to go, grab it and drop it in the box. And then again, once you do it once, you simply just run the program over and over again. And so it can really do this forever, whether we want one Benchy or 10,000 of them or whatever it is you are doing. So let's check it out. All right, and that is pretty much it for basic object pick and pack. Let's cover some of the different scenarios that you might be thinking of and obviously the ones that we here are planning for as well. So first thing, obviously this is just a prototype. The product is not released yet. So right now, everything that I say, these are my best guesses of how things will be done and how we're gonna do them. Things could obviously change. And also with these programs, you can of course just make your own, which is totally encouraged. But nonetheless, let's jump into it. So. Some common questions that kind of came up as we were doing this is, what if there's multiple small objects on one print bed and the gripper can't really grab them? So for that, we have the actual print bed removal system. I'll play a clip of it right here. It's pretty cool and it kind of solves most of the issues that could come up. Uh, it can grab small things, big things, things with different geometry. Basically what's happening is when the printer is done, the print bed goes to the bottom and then the 401 bot uses the adapter there to go and grab the entire print bed. Next one is how do you keep the printer uh, continuously printing? And we can simply modify the G code. So if you wanna print 100 Benchies, we can uh, modify the G code so that after it prints one, it can stop, wait for the robot to come and grab it, and then it can print the next one. Now. You could obviously also just have the robot go and actually push the buttons on the printer, but that would be a bit of overkill. Uh, the next one is how do we set things up with a different printer scene? So obviously I have the three 3D printers behind me, but if yours are not in the exact same placement as theirs, and to do that, we basically just run the program once and we go, for example, we'll click to move to door number one and then the robot arm will go to door number one and you will physically place your 3D printer there uh, where door number one has to be. You do that three times and then the whole thing is kind of calibrated. Now, also, if you have a different type of 3D printer, which I'm sure lots of us do, we can simply just change those waypoints or those calibration points in the software. The cool thing about the 401 bot is that no matter what, 3D printer or what the manufacturers do with these machines. If your hands can do something, we can pretty much make the 401 bot do it. So programs that come out, they're super easy to modify to work with any environment. Next up, what if we had a thousand printers, like a giant print farm? So in theory, you could use a really, really long linear rail. This one right here is about a meter. Uh, but that is not really the right solution for it. However, in the future, we do hope to be able to expand on the project and have things like the 401 bot moving around on say some wheels or some type of device that can move in another two directions, stuff like that. And that kind of reminds me of one funny thing is that this is a standing desk and sometimes we have the robot actually go over, press the button on the standing desk so that it can raise it or lower it. Uh, but that's kind of just a workaround and for fun. If you have a thousand 3D printers, this is probably not the solution for you right now. However, uh, it can also run a bunch of other programs. So for example, maybe you need something to uh, organize parts or do QC control on parts or sanding or boxing or labeling or Whatever it is, you name it, we could probably make a program that will help you automate that task. Now, those are kind of the main ones that come to mind right now, and I don't want this video to go too long, but if you have any other questions about what's possible or can it do this, can it do that, et cetera, drop them below and I'll try and get back to you on all of them. That's it for this video. I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next one.